Hello and welcome to this Friday edition of Asia Business Report. I'm Sharon Jeet Lael. Now, a South Korean court is expected to pass its ruling in a corruption case involving Samsung's de facto boss, J.Y. Lee. Mr. Lee has been in jail since February after being charged in a scandal that led to the ousting of South Korea's former President Park Geun-hye. Now, business reporter Yugita Limaya now joins me live uh, from Seoul in front of that courthouse. Yugita, uh, tell us what we're expecting today. Well, Jay Wiley will be presented in this building behind me in court. Uh, prosecutors have asked for a 12-year jail sentence from him. The big charge against him is that of bribery. He's accused of donating to two organizations run by the former president's close friend in return for favors that would pave the way for him to eventually become the boss of the Samsung group. There are other charges against him as well, like embezzlement, hiding assets overseas, perjury. So today we will hear if the court finds him guilty of any or all of those charges. And it's quite significant also how large a sentence he would get if he is found guilty. Significant sentence, as you say, that uh, uh, Yugita, if he does get put behind bars, I mean, what are the future plans of the company, particularly succession plans? Who takes over? Well, he, this is a family-run conglomerate. It's been run by his family ever since it was founded in the late 1930s. His father has been incapacitated after he had a heart attack a few years ago. He has two sisters who have been uh, in the management of different parts of the group. Uh, Samsung hasn't put out a formal uh, plan yet about, you know, it, that if he does go to jail, uh, you know, what would happen. And that's because they've denied the allegations against him. They've said uh, that, you know, they didn't bribe anyone or seek any favors. Now, we know that whatever happens today could potentially have a huge impact on uh, Samsung as well as the South Korean economy. It is, after all, the country's largest conglomerate. That's right. It accounts for almost a fifth of the economy here. It's the biggest company in the country. Uh, as far as Samsung's fortunes are concerned, they don't seem to have been dented uh, by this trial because they've actually had record profits, uh, you know, in the last quarter. Uh, but this verdict is not just about Samsung. You know, there are these large conglomerates here called j -Bowls, and they dominate the South Korean economy. Uh, and in the past, many of the heads of these companies have been convicted of corruption, but previously they've been let off. They've been pardoned, saying that, you know, it would have an economic impact. Now you have a new government in power which won elections on the promise of cleaning up the economy. So if J. Wiley gets a sentence today and gets a strong sentence today, and if he's not pardoned, they're saying that it would be a strong message to the large conglomerates. All right, Yugita Lemay, they're watching that verdict uh, that is due later this afternoon in front of that uh, courthouse in Seoul. Now, a major overhaul of Qantas has just paid off. Just uh, in the last uh, hour or two hours or so, the Australian airline posted its second best core annual profit ever, slightly ahead of analyst estimates. It cut its staff by more than 5,000 and it reduced costs by around two billion dollars to achieve some of that higher efficiency. Well, earlier I asked industry analyst uh, Jochen Kraus from Simon Kusher how the uh, company plans to hold on to their gains. Jochen uh, Kraus, they're speaking to me earlier. Now, WeWork has received an additional three billion dollars in investment from Japan's SoftBank as it builds up its global expansion. A SoftBank has already made almost uh, one and a half billion dollars of investment in the New York-based company as it sets up shop in China, Japan, South Korea and elsewhere in Southeast Asia. We work, leases office space and rents it out to individuals and small companies such as startups. Now, have you heard this? In this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. Well, that's the words of uh, Benjamin Franklin and they still ring true in today's society. And in many countries, inheritance tax or death taxes are an absolute certainty. But in others like Israel, Australia and Sweden, the tax has been abolished. Well, inheritance tax is often hailed as a fair method of income redistribution, but is it actually good for the economy and business? Well, in the next instalment of our Business of Death series, two tax experts have gone head to head to argue the pros and cons of inheritance tax. Quite a contentious discussion there, and if you want to join that discussion, you can uh, get in touch with us on uh, our hashtag Business of Death and let us know your thoughts as well. 
Now, investors will be watching closely uh, those speeches from the uh, Fed chairwoman and European Central Bank's uh, president later today at the annual policy summit in Jackson Hole. They'll be listening out for any hints of shifting interest rate plans from the policymakers there. And representatives from the central banks uh, of more than 40 countries, they're all attending this three-day retreat in the U.S. state of Wyoming. Well, let's take a look at what impact that might have on the markets and see uh, Asian markets right now. We're seeing the Nikkei actually gaining ever so slightly. That's really due to the fact that we've seen slightly weaker yen that helps exporters. Australia, though, not benefiting hugely from the fact that we just saw Qantas uh, reporting those stellar results. In fact, those Qantas shares are slightly lower as well. And let's take a look at uh, Wall Street and how it ended. It was flat. And that's it for this edition of Asia Business Report. Thanks for watching. Thank you.